In this video I'm going to show you how to use a Dark Knight Photoshop action. So I'm going to use this photo here as an example for a demonstration of the action. And the way the action works is you open up your photo, you fill in your side with a color and just play the action. Here is the effect that the action creates. Okay, so as you can see the action creates a really a lot of details. Uh, first of all it creates those cloud textures in the background, it creates this realistic rain those rain splashes, the dispersed rocks and uh, the action also creates a 20 color looks that you can choose from. Okay, so I'm just gonna close these uh, two windows. So when you open up your photo before you use the action there are a few things that you should check to make sure that the action uh, will run without any errors. So the first thing that you should check is that your photo is a background layer, so it should be called a background and uh, have this little lock icon. So if you have something like this or anything else, just go to Layer, New, and just choose a background from Layer. And uh, also click on this little menu icon here and choose Panel Options. And just make sure that you got the option Add Copy to Copy Layers and Groups checked. And go to Image Mode. Uh, your photo should be in RGB Color Mode, Edge Bit Channel. And also check the image size over here. So. You should avoid using a small resolution images and for best results you should use photos that are around from 20 to 3500 pixels wide or high. Okay. So to log the action go to Window, Actions, click on this little menu icon, Load Actions and just choose the action that came with the load according uh, to your Photoshop version. Okay, the action will appear in your Actions panel. And to the brush, you can just hit B on your keyboard to select the brush tool and right click anywhere uh, uh, inside the canvas and just click on this gear icon here, load brushes and just choose the brushes uh, that can be done load, uh, Dark Knight brushes file, click load and the brush will appear here in your brush, uh, brushes panel, there are uh, uh, four brushes included. Okay, all you have to do now is just uh, go to layer, new layer to create a new layer name it brush, it is very important that you write all letters lowercase otherwise the action won't work. And now you can just select the brush tool, pick some soft brush and just make sure your opacity is set to 100% and you can choose any color here, color doesn't matter. And you can just brush over your subject like this, you don't have to be uh, too precise with the edges. Or if it's easier to you can create a selection of your subject uh, using some of the lasso tools for example. Uh, and then just uh, go to edit, fill, or you can just press shift uh, and F5 keyboard and just fill it with a foreground color, fill the selection of your subject. Okay, so I'm just gonna open my PSD file because I have already, uh, well, uh, here it is. So I heard done the brushing before. Uh, so as you can see, uh, you need to have these uh, Either you can uh, brush your subject or fill the selection, we need to have that color fill on this uh, brush layer here. And all you have to do now is to just select the action inside the folder and click play. And the action will need a few minutes to complete depending on your uh, image size. So uh, the action will also stop for two times asking you to do some quick things. So I'm just going to fasten the video here and get back as soon as the action uh, stops for the first time. Okay, so the action has just stopped for the first time and here is the message. It says, not just brush over the areas where you would like to add uh, rain splashes. Proper brush will be already selected by the action. You just need to start brushing. After you finish with brushing, click play again. To stop to proceed. So you click stop. And as it says in the message, the brush, uh, the proper brush will be already selected. Uh, also the, the color. Uh, so all you have to do now is to just uh, brush where you wish to create the uh, rain splashes, right? Uh, you can change uh, the size of the brush by using the uh, square brackets on your keyboard. All right, just like that. So just gonna click over here, a little bit over here, And in the next message, uh, you will need to repeat the same step, uh, but with the, uh, uh, another brush. Okay, so after you finish with brushing, all you have to do is to just click play. 
and here is the second message uh, and it says now just repeat the previous step proper brush will be already selected by the action you just need to start brushing after you finish with brushing click play again to stop to proceed so to stop again and just repeat the previous step uh, so you just brush for this we wish to create the rain splashes Okay, maybe a little bit over here. Okay, that's it. And all you have to do now is to just click play again, and uh, the action will continue to work. So I'm going to fasten the video here again and get back uh, uh, as soon as the action is finished. And then I'm going to go through all the layers to show you how can you customize how each layer works and how, uh, how can you customize the effect to get most out of the effect. Okay, so the action here just finished. So just gonna uh, close the actions panel and uh, just gonna expand a little bit this layers panel. Okay, so the first thing that you probably want to do each time you run the action is to just close uh, all these folders uh, because it's going to be much more easier for you to work with the layers so how to quickly do that is just hold control and all buttons for PC or command option for a Mac and while this folder is selected just click on the little letter here and that we are going to close all the folders okay so let's see what we got here the first layer here is a brush layer uh, that I have made in the beginning of the video and why we have this brush layer here is because the action is made so each time you run the action even if you use the same brush area, you're gonna get unique result. And what it means is, if you just delete this folder, just play the action again, uh, the rain and um, all these rocks, we only have a, a, a different form will be differently arranged and deployed. Okay, so that's why I got this uh, brush layer here. If you don't like, uh, if you'd like to try, um, if you would like, uh, just like to randomize this result, you just delete this folder, play the action again and see how it looks and you can repeat that step a few times until you are happy with, uh, with, the, with the starting result, alright? So, just gonna open the folder here and uh, you're, if you're happy with this result you can then just, uh, this layer here is sharpening, you can then just adjust the sharpening, but if you'd like to customize the result then just, uh, first thing you, uh, you need to do is to just hide this layer uh, for now and I'm going to explain later why. So. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, start customizing the effect from the bottom here. So here we got a background color. We're gonna double click on the color box. You can change the color. Alright, uh, just keep in mind that uh, as you're changing the brightness, it's also the visibility of your subject will change. So I usually just leave this default. And uh, uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, this Here we got a background textures. So when you open the folder, you got a two textures here. Uh, what you can do is you can play with their opacities to create the different results. That's for that. So you just click with the word opacity and just drag it aside. And uh, all the layers that you customize by changing the opacity. So you just click on the word opacity and drag it to the side, left to right, okay? Or you can click with this little here and then just move this pointer over there, okay? Uh, so here we got a subject folder and uh, here's the, the main subject uh, here uh, this is the uh, subject contrast okay so you can adjust the contrast by changing the opacity and uh, I'm going to use a little bit higher value for subject contrast here something like this and here is the uh, subject highlights. So if you just turn it off and on, you can see uh, it's just going to uh, the, to boost the, the highlights of your subject. And if your subject still remains uh, pretty dark, even if you have this layer set to uh, 100% opacity, you can ju just press Control or Command J to duplicate this layer. And then you're just going to increase the 
the highlights even more you can repeat this step uh, again if, if you'd like to increase it even more okay and you can also then change the opacity of this second layer if you wish uh, what I also like to do is to just select this layer mask here and um, just click uh, open the properties panel if you don't have it over there you can just go to window properties and as you can see this layer has a layer mask that softens the edges of your subject and makes a, a better blending and if you change the density you can remove that layer mask okay so you're just gonna lower the opacity to just uh, soften the edges just a little bit okay and uh, what I like to do is to just uh, pick a salt brush, set foreground color to black, still this layer mask and just remove the bottom part of the subject to make some blending right but as I have uh, now uh, dropped the density here if you just brush with the black here it's not going to remove uh, the subject totally because uh, this is opacity set at 27% right so if you'd like to remove some parts of, of the subject uh, totally and you have lowered the opacity of this layer mask because you wish to uh, to soften the edges uh, less then what you can do is just go to layer new and choose group from layers while this group is selected choose ok and then just click here to create a layer mask so you created a, a actually uh, you can put this whole folder into another uh, folder uh, where you got a new layer mask and then you just brush with a black and you're gonna remove uh, the subject total in those areas and what I'd like to do then is just select this layer mask here the background textures uh, choose a white color uh, this, this folder here the background textures has this layer mask uh, that is removing the texture uh, from the uh, subject so the texture is not covering the subject and uh, they're removed from the subject area so after I remove those parts of the subject then I just select this layer mask and brush with the white to create the textures or their areas depending on the look of the texture it may be more or less visible okay that's it uh, the next uh, folder we got here are the rocks and here we got the blurred rocks I'm just gonna hide this one for now uh, so as you can see the rocks are uh, uh, arranged into the three folders small medium and uh, large rocks uh, you can select any of these layers and using a move tool you can just uh, move those parts uh, however you want uh, you can press ctrl or command j to uh, uh, duplicate them if you like uh, you can press ctrl or command t to transform them, scale them, rotate them ok you can go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur to, uh, to blur the, uh, some parts if you like and uh, th those parts are not visible over your subject so if you just have a hold the shift button, disable, you click here to disable the mask it's going to be visible all over your subject so what you can do, you can just select this layer mask uh, pick a brush tool, set foreground color to white and just brush over the areas where you would like to make uh, those parts visible ok like this or what you can also do is uh, using a control command click on this layer thumbnail to make selection of it and then hold control command and shift to add all these parts into a selection and now you can uh, select this layer mask, pick a brush tool, set foreground color to white and now when you have this selection you can see wh uh, where the parts are the positioned uh, behind the, the subject and you can ju just brush with a, uh, with a, with a white so uh, with a white color over the uh, parts that you would like to make them visible okay just like that press control command D to see how it looks then press uh, control command and uh, we can choose here the uh, reset or control uh, command shift D to just uh, create the selection again to actually to reselect what you have selected previously so I'm just gonna I'm not, I'm not going to brush all or parts ok 
Okay. That's it. And now I'm going to repeat the same with the <coughs> excuse me. With the medium parts. So you can do it this way to reveal the parts, you can just brush white without creating selection. I'd like to create selection to see where are the parts exactly and just uh, brush like this. Because otherwise it, it can happen that you just brush some part to the rock and it doesn't it will not look uh, realistically, right? On this way you just uh, reveal the whole rock or you don't you don't reveal it at all. Okay, that's it. And here we have the large parts. Large parts are usually outside of the subject area. I'm just gonna move these parts a little bit out. Somewhere here. I'm going to create a selection of this one. Brush with white to make it visible over the subject. Now brush with the white here also. Okay. Uh, what we got here are the rock saturation. So they are the saturated by default. Uh, you can increase the saturation if you like. Uh, they will be in the color uh, from your subject. Okay. I'm just going to leave it uh, by default. You also can change here the rock uh, brightness. It's just some uh, correction uh, of the brightness. Okay, so uh, next we got here are the bl uh, blurred rocks. You also got these two layers for brightness saturation here. Okay, with the same settings. And uh, they're also uh, layered as you can see. So uh, what I'd like to do is to just hide all these layers, just click and hold, because sometimes there are just too many parts, and then just turn them on uh, the visibility one by one. It may happen that some parts are not visible, then just try to move the layer. It may happen that the parts are went outside of the canvas. Okay. And uh, the blue parts are don't have the layer master. They are going uh, over the the subject as well. So I'm just gonna start them on one by one. So this one contains too much rock. So just gonna hi leave that one uh, hidden. Move this one a little bit. And if you wish to remove some specific rock uh, for, or from some layer, you can then just click here to add the layer mask to that layer, pick a brush tool, set it for gonna color to black, and just brush over that layer and just gonna remove it. Okay, or you can just brush into this layer mask. It's the same here, you can brush over these layer masks to, uh, to remove any of the small rocks or here for any of the medium rocks or here for remove any of the large rocks or just add some another layer mask. Okay, uh, what we got here are the uh, darken edges layer. So just gonna darken uh, the edges. You can duplicate this layer by pressing Control Command J if you wish to darken them a little bit more. I'm just gonna leave the default. And here we got the light, uh, light source. You can change the opacity here if you like. I'm gonna keep this one default as well. And uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, here we got the, uh, the rain folder. Okay, and it is uh, the layered. So just gonna hide all the layers. So you have a different uh, type of the, of the of the rains here of the rains look. 
I usually just keep uh, uh, keep the default. You can change the opacities of some of these layers to create uh, slightly different looks. And you got this layer here that creates uh, increased intensity. So if you just hide that one, it will make the rain uh, much more subtle, right? So you can even duplicate this layer to make it more more uh, intensive, like this. Okay. And here we got the rain splashes. So these are the small rain splashes. Just hide this layer. This is a small one, and they are uh, created automatically by the action uh, uh, over the uh, on the edges. And uh, depending on your photo, it may happen that it doesn't found uh, uh, some edges. So just gonna uh, first select this layer mask and foreground color to black. Just gonna uh, remove the splashes from the bottom areas, and if you wish to add some more splash to some more areas, you can just create a new layer, pick a brush tool, and just uh, choose this brush over here, Dark Knight Brush 4, and um, set foreground color to white, and then just brush over the areas you wish to create splashes, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna create the layer mask over here as well. Brush with the black if I need to remove some areas. So I'm gonna select this brush again, set foreground color to white. And while the time is selected, not the, the layer mask, just gonna brush a little bit over here, over here. A little bit here as well. Okay, that's it, and uh, maybe a little bit over here. So you can change the opacity of the, the rain splashes. And uh, here we got the uh, large rain splashes, so just gonna turn it on. And those rain splashes are created over on the areas that you have brushed when the, the action stops for two times and ask you to brush where you wish to create the rain splashes, okay? And uh, their opacity set is 60%, you can Experiment with that one, with the opacity, try to increase it or lower it, uh, depending on how much um, intensive you wish to make those splashes. I found this while it goes uh, usually the best and uh, creates, it blends the best, creating the, the most realistic result. And uh, here we got a color look, so the color look one is uh, selected by the action, so all you have to do is to uh, you can turn, it on, uh, turn it off, Choose any other that you want, turn it on, see how it looks. If you don't like it, simply uh, try with another uh, until you find the one that goes the best with your photo. What you can also do is combine few color logs. So you can, for example, turn on this one. And I'm just gonna turn on this one here. And I'm just gonna select this one here and just gonna uh, lower its opacity. Something like this. So you can then change the also opacity of the second one. So you can combine few color logs and create some unique color look. Okay. So here we got the overall contrast. So just gonna click over the opacity and drag it to the side. This is very sensitive. Now depending on what kind of results you wish to create, you can really create uh, uh, a lot of different results. You can uh, this layer can uh, change uh, the, the the look of the design pretty much. So I'm just gonna use uh, something like this okay the URL brightness you double click here and you can change the brightness uh, by moving these five pointers over there you're just gonna uh, boost the highlights a little bit just like that and here we got the use a single color uh, uh, layer. So if you turn it on uh, and just hide the color looks, you're gonna use the. Uh, uh, if you wish to use a single color, then just uh, turn on this layer. And when you double click on this color box, you can just choose any other color. You can also combine this uh, with the color looks. Okay, for example, I leave the color looks turned on. 
and play with these opacities here and combine these a single color with the color looks and here we get the overall saturation so double click there and you can then uh, add other saturation over here I'm gonna increase the saturation a little bit like this and here we get the overall sharpening so uh, why I need to create this layer again is because when I turn it on uh, if you just move it a little bit, you can see this uh, layer contains those lines, those are the edges uh, of your um, uh, photo look uh, uh, after you have played the action. So when you make some other uh, changes to your design, you move some parts or you uh, create more parts or make any other changes, uh, those lines need to be updated again to make, a uh, to make a correct sharpening, right? So you just have to create this layer again, so you're just gonna delete. Uh, press delete to delete that layer and create a new layer and press Alt, Control, Shift or uh, Command, Option, Shift and E to create a snapshot and uh, then press Control, Command, Shift U to desaturate the photo go to filter, other high pass, you probably had a filter here but if not just go to other high pass set radius to 2 pixels, choose OK and just change its bonding mode to overlay and now you can just change the opacity to adjust the contra uh, to adjust the sharpening. I'm just gonna leave it uh, to 100%. Okay, so let's just quickly check before and after. So this is the before, and this is the after effect. Okay, so I hope you understood everything. But if you still need any help or you got any questions, feel free to contact me anytime via my Envato profile page. And thanks for watching.